Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Anna and welcome to Paperback Tulips. Today's video is going to be a wrap up in which I'll be chatting through all the things and I've read in the month of March, which is a total of six books. So without further ado, let's get to it. The first book that I've picked up and finished in the month of March was Beloved by Toni Morrison. Uh, I actually started this book in February. I uh, got through about um, halfway through or a little less than that probably and then finish it in March. It's not an easy read, but a very important story. This is a story about Sebi, who was a slave, but managed to escape the slave's house that she was in. We follow her story and the story of her child, who uh, she was pregnant with when she made her escape from the slave's house. It is a story about how she managed to escape, how horrible her life was back when she was enslaved. But this the overall story is so much more. It's all about the repercussions of her being enslaved and how she being enslaved impacted not only her for the rest of her life, but also um, the life of her child, who even though she was born free um, she still had to deal with everything that her mother and her ancestors went through as slaves this is a very beautiful but also horrifying novel the story about how one person can make someone else's life a living hell and how this mistreatment not only impacts people that are just directly be mistreated but also the whole generations after that up to until this day we see the repercussions of slavery we still see the discrimination happening we still see how people may be superstitious or diminishing towards another person just because of their background and just because of history and how our ancestors were taught to be treated. It doesn't go away. This is why it's timeless and this is why this book is so important. The discrimination is still there. This actually got really political and very opinionated. Uh, I think this book was really great. The only thing that I would say is that this book is extremely slow paced. It's all about the characters, development and psychology, all about wounds that may never heal in fact in my opinion it's a very good book four out of five stars next up i picked up the 13th tale by diane setterfield this is a book i got from my dad for christmas last year it is a mystery novel set in yorkshire it's about a prosperous biographer called margaret who one day receives a letter from a very famous uh, writer by the winter who asks her to write up her biography. The mysterious part of this is that by the winter, throughout her life, told millions of stories about her upbringing, about her childhood and her family history. Uh, all of them were different stories. So nobody in this world knows what actually happened, where she's from, what kind of person she is. So Margaret decides to take up this opportunity to learn the truth. Margaret arrives to the writer's house in Yorkshire and is immediately pulled into a mystery that surrounds the writer and the family and the house they were brought up in. This story, oh man, it was so good. This book was really atmospherical, very dark, very Bronte like set in Yorkshire, it had the feeling of countryside. The writing was really beautiful. When I was reading it, I could feel the humidity in the air, I could feel the countryside, I could feel 
every little single bit of the story coming to life it was just absolutely immersive the final plot twist as well i didn't see it coming it was a big shock for me how this story actually finished this story was absolutely fantastic it was mysterious it was fascinating it was a story about a family story about books and passion the only thing that i didn't quite like was the margaret story i think that we spent so much time in Vida's story and following her childhood to find out what actually happened to her and why she became the person that she is right now and we completely forget about Margaret's story who actually have a mystery to her life as well if her story was explored a little more then this would be a perfect book uh, I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars, but I am sure that I will be rereading this. This is a very autumnal read, and this is the kind of story that I would be returning to multiple times. Oh, I also forgot to mention, there's one plot line in this book um, that is very, very connected to Jane Eyre, and the author actually summarizes the whole of Jane Eyre in a couple of sentences. And me, as a person who has never read Jane Eyre, but wanted to, that completely spoiled the whole book for me. So um, really watch out for this uh, in this book. But other than that, I think if you've read Jane Eyre, and I think if you enjoy the Bronte sister writing style and the feeling of their work, you would definitely like this book. All right, the next thing that I've read in the month of March was a reread for me, and it was The Hunger Games by Susan Collins. So I don't have a physical copy of um, this book currently as I've lended it to my sister, but I've listened to it on audiobook. I decided it was the time for me to reread the whole series, taking into account the fact that the new book is coming out in May or June to check that for you guys. I'll put the release date down at the bottom in here. So a new book is coming out. What we know so far is that it's going to be about President Snow and uh, before he actually became president. So it's gonna be his story, a villain story basically. The Hunger Games, I, I'm not gonna give you a synopsis, it's such a popular series that I think everybody knows about it already. And I absolutely love this series. I had so much fun rediscovering this work. It's one of my favorite series of all times. Even though I haven't actually read it that many times. I've only read it once before. I've seen the movies many times, but I still forgot a lot of small details. So it was really fun to just dive right into this world meet all these characters again and upon rereading i think the thing that actually stood out for me was the writing style the book is written in the first perspective uh, from katniss's perspective and the writing style is just amazingly connected to katniss's personality she's just so focused on her task which is to supply food and to provide for her family, for her mother and her younger sister. She doesn't care about beautiful things. She doesn't care about the beauty of the world or she doesn't even look for this wonderful things or nice things. She just focuses on the job being done. And the writing of this book reflects her personality perfectly. I absolutely loved it. It was just amazing it was heartbreaking i had a laugh i had so much fun rereading this series i had so much fun rereading that book and i'll definitely be continuing my reread in the months to come just before the release of the prequel next book that I finished was all the light we cannot see by anthony door this is a very well-known well-loved uh, book that's won multiple awards it's a historical fiction novel set in France and Germany during Second World War. We follow two different perspectives. In the first perspective, we follow 
um, the story of Mary Lore, who's a French girl who, just before the outbreak of the Second World War, loses her eyesight. Mary Lore is trying to get used to her new life with the condition that she has. It is especially difficult taking into account all the circumstances and the time and that she's becoming blind. So we follow her story as she rediscovers how to live her life with the condition that she has um, while also facing the Second World War. She and her father flee Paris and find asylum with um, her uncle who was with her uncle who was in the First World War and he has never quite recovered from being part of the, the war. On the other hand, we have a German boy, Werner, who is an orphan. Werner and his sister are brought up in an orphanage run by a French woman. Werner is growing up with the perspective of going to work in the mines because that's the only thing that a boy can do in, in the environment, in the city where they actually live. So when an opportunity comes up for him to join Hitler Youth, um, he takes it. And we follow Werner's journey through Hitler's youth and then his time at war. The two stories are connected with each other. And from the very beginning, I predicted what the connection would be and how it will turn out. So that was a little disappointing for me because I was looking forward to being blown away. This story didn't really impact me that much. I thought I'm gonna have so many more feelings. I thought I'm gonna be blown away. I thought I'm gonna be emotional. And I was strangely neutral towards it. What I really enjoyed in this book, it was the things that it talked about, the theme that it discovered. For the most part, it was about looking and finding the thing in your life that you think is worth saving and preserving, even in times of war, or even in times of a massive disaster. What I also really, really loved was the writing style in this book. Obviously, it's dual perspective, so two perspectives were distinctively different. In Mary Lord's perspective, we discover the world through shapes and sounds, which is the way she discovers the world. So I think that was amazingly done. Overall, I gave this book four out of five stars. Next, I picked up the first book in the Devabad trilogy, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This story is evolved around genes and Middle Eastern mythology. The story follows Nahari, who at the beginning of the book finds out that she's the last descendant of this big, mighty, powerful gene family. They had a special ability of understanding the, every language of the world even without previously learning it or knowing it just by hearing it um, but she also has a special power that only her family only her type of genes um, had which was healing Nahari teams up with Dara a slave's gene who takes her to the capital city of the gene kingdom uh, and from then the story unfollows. I thought the work was extremely unique. It was set based on the Middle Eastern um, culture and mythology rather than um, the Western culture and mythology, which is the main theme across the rest of the fantasy that I've actually read. I'm not saying that it's the only theme, but it was a breath of fresh air. It was absolutely amazing. Most of the first book is actually world building, we get to know the different types of genes, the history of the kingdom, the rebellion, the wars, the rebellions, everything that led up to the moment when Nahari enters the capital city. It is so well thought out. I absolutely loved it. The main thing that I didn't like in this story was the love interest. The romance is very insta-lovey. Nahari meets Dara and within 20 pages they are in love. I understand attraction, I understand attachment, but there's no way that a person could get attached to another person that much 
in seven days that they've traveled together. It just felt very unreal, very forced. But the book, the way the story finishes in that first book of the trilogy is such a cliffhanger. I am really, really looking forward to reading and picking up the rest of the series. I know the second book is out already and the third final one's coming out in June, I believe. So I'll be definitely reading and continuing on with the series. I really enjoyed it. I gave it four out of five stars. The last book I read in March was My Sister the Serial Killer by Oinkan Braithwaite. It's categorized as mystery horror novel, but with a humor element to it. The book follows two sisters, one of which, as the title suggests, is a killer. And then we have our main protagonist, who is the main person who deals with the aftermath of her sister's actions. She's the person that the sister calls for after she's committed another murder just to clean up, dispose of the body and ensure there's no sign of murder happened. First of all, there was no horror element to it whatsoever apart from the first maybe four chapters when the actual, the latest murder happens and it has to be cleaned up and the body has to be disposed of. Second of all, there's no mystery around it we all know who killed and what happened to the body. There's nothing interesting, intriguing about it. Third of all, the story was supposed to be funny. I heard so many people say that it was hilarious and as much as I did find some of the conversations between the characters funny, I wouldn't say that it was a hilarious book. The story in general was very disappointing. I was hoping for something unusual, I was hoping for something that I will remember, that will be, that will introduce something new to the mystery genre. But what I got was a very average, a very average story. I didn't hate it, but I also did not like it. It was a three star read for me. I think the most interesting part about the book was the portrayal of a dysfunctional family. The mother clearly has a favorite daughter. She treats the two daughters completely differently. And this is clearly visible in how the two sisters interact. The relationship between them is very dysfunctional as well. The sister that murders, she doesn't really care at all about her other sister who helps her cover it up. Whereas the sister, the main protagonist, she does everything for the other sister. She's been made into believing that she has to be there for her sister because she's the older sister and she has to look after the first sister. Getting nothing, no respect whatsoever in return. I was hoping for something more from the story rather than a story of a dysfunctional family. I thought it's gonna be funny, I thought it's gonna be mysterious and it wasn't and it was uh, a disappointment for me. All right guys, so these are all the books that I've read in the month of March. Be sure to let me know in the comments if you read any of the ones that I just talked to you about uh, and also what you've read in the past month. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to my channel for some more bookish content. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again with another video soon. Bye.